And what's going on? Fontaine here, VIPSoundLab.com, and we're back on Machine 2.6.2. This time we're going to be doing a little routing, or some say routing, in Machine 2.6.2 because we're getting ready for the new Machine 2.6.5 update, which I'm pretty excited about because some of the features that's in it now allows you to preserve some of your routings, which I think is a great feature because there's been times where I've actually set up some routing and then when you want to change your groups, it kind of kicks you in the butt because it didn't let you previously, um, you know, preserve those routings. And you had to go there and do it all over again, which was like a major headache. So I'm glad that they're updating that because what happens is when it comes to the ability now to preserve your audio and MIDI routings when loading new groups and kits from the browser, um, let's say for groups, for example, we already have... Um, the little pattern icon now under your groups okay for example here's the machine browser here's the little pattern uh, icon what's gonna happen is they're gonna add another icon right here you're gonna select that and that icon right there will actually activate the ability to preserve your groups and patterns when doing your routing so anything that's you know pattern based associated with the group that's gonna be loaded the upcoming release um, will have that option on there. So I think that's a great addition. And basically, you already know that's going to be a major time saver when it comes to changing kits on the fly. All right, so what's going to happen also is when you turn that button off, you'll find that any custom audio and MIDI routings you've made in your group will remain in place upon loading a new group. And by turning the button off, you're going to be telling the machine not to load the saved routings or routings, thus leaving your current... Uh, routings or routings in place with native instruments machina you also can use it as a plug-in you know in other DAWs as I'm using here inside Ableton live and turning this button off uh, will also save lots of time because you can create your desired routings to and from your DAW and have the freedom to audition other kits without having to reset the routings each time so I'm gonna go ahead and get into some of the routings in this uh, this template here uh, this was a request from a uh, VIP member. Um, other than that, the machine 2.6.5 update, the uh, it's also going to have the ideas view, which I think is going to be awesome in the section view where you can drop, you know, your scenes inside the section. So that's going to be another great uh, feature as well. But, you know, we'll get into that in other videos when it's kind of, I guess you could say it's going to kind of have the layout of the machine jam controller. Um, that probably would be the best way to explain it. And then when, you know, when you're a machine and stuff like that, you can, or a machine, I should say, you can go ahead and, you know, focus on the ideas view. The scene button, you know, will allow triggering of the scenes in the ideas view. And when focused on the arranger view, the scene button will allow triggering of the sections or the containers, as some call it. So I think it's an awesome concept. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the template itself. I think this is going to be a great resource when the machine 2.6.5 update comes out. So then that way you guys can have a dope template that you can, um, have everything prefabricated, preset up, and ready to bang out the box. And you can go through your group in the group browser here, <clears throat> you know, and go ahead and change some kits on the fly. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at some of the kit. We'll close this uh, little icon here down because we really don't need that open. And take a look at some of the routings. Now, here's your channel properties uh, button here. And here's your plugin properties here. You don't want to be on the plugin properties. You want to be on the channel properties in case someone's uh, wanting to know how to set this up. As you can see right here, here's some sounds. As you can see under audio, you have the EXT setup, which is basically uh, just a copy of what's on the mixer page. And I'm just going to go through some of those like that. As you can see right there, there's your external outputs. Here's the MIDI for your MIDI channels. Again, as you can see right there, there's some of the sounds. We have a set to host. Okay, so channel one, two, three, all the way down to 16. It's pretty self-explanatory. I mean, it's pretty easy to set up. We have those guys set up like that. And then under your inputs here, under MIDI, we have everything set up right there. I just go through them like really quick like this here. So we have that set up like that. Again, that's just basically a copy of basically what you have over here under your mixer screen when you activate your inputs and all that good stuff here and your auxes. Like you see right there, here's your host channels, your EXT channels, and your host channels. All right, so we'll close this down. As you can see right here, here's Ableton Live, and we have a machine. The arm button has to be on. 
there's a the kick. Just going through some of the sounds. And you see right there, everything's tracked out. So that could be a big time saver when you want to get in there, you know, and start doing your mix. You know, just, just going through some of the sounds, not trying to make a beat or anything like that. Just basically showing the versatility of the template and how everything's tracked out. And as you can see right here, it's just basically mimicking what's down here inside machine. As you can see right down there, I hope I can get this on the screen a little bit better. But you can see right there. You know, just basically mimicking what's there in machine. So that's pretty much how you get that set up. And then over here inside of uh, Native Instruments Machine, what I did was I made some external MIDI tracks, as you can see right here, and I color coded them. I color coded the kicks in green, um, hi hats, and kind of this orangey color here, snares, kind of this purple color here, and you know, cymbals, and this kind of teal color here. And I left this uh, little pattern here, <clears throat> just so when you get the template and you first open it, so you know what's going on and understand. So when you press play. So if you look over here, shrink this down a little bit. If you look at these little icons here as it's looping, it's sounding off all the notes there. So when you first get in, you'll understand what's going on. You'll understand that the template's going from C1 to D2. You see right there. And I'm moving this MIDI note around. If you look over there, You see it's triggering all the MIDI there. So this is a great resource and a great time saver. Okay, so we go over here to machine two. Now when we go to the tracks, I'll use this view right here. I think this would be a lot easier. And I'm gonna use the left and right arrow here just to go through the tracks like this here. As you can see right there, you can use your, your arrow on your uh, keyboard and scroll through the tracks. Now, machine is gonna be the first instance which is already in use, so you don't have to worry about setting that up. It's going to be all ends, MIDI, and all channels. In case you can see that uh, right here. So on your second track, or your external MIDI uh, track, I should say, basically what happens is, when it comes to MIDI 2, the first instance right here is always going to be Machine 2. And it's going to same, the same thing is going to apply when it comes to this guy right here. It's always going to say uh, 1, Machine 2. You know, that's going to be the first uh, the MIDI channel there. The audio from is where it's going to change up. It's going to go in a sequential order from 2 to 16. So without uh, being too lengthy, basically it's going to be like 2, 3, 4, 5. And that's how I label the tracks up here. I label them VIPSL. In other words, VIP sound of track 2, track 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This is going to make it really easy to understand for someone who doesn't understand the routing process. So for example, when I'm over in track 3, you see it's going to be 3. Okay, and so on and so on and so on. So hopefully that will make it extremely, extremely easy for someone who doesn't understand how that works. And again, when you press play, when you get inside the template, all right. And while I have the video running, let me go ahead and throw this quick little tip in here as well. I'm going to, uh, inject this little part into the video. I'm not really sure where I'm going to put it in, but one um, point I wanted to make when doing it this way, in case someone's wondering, they're like, okay, what is the point, you know, having your workflow like this, you can't put any audio plugins on MIDI when you're tracking it out. But one of the beautiful things about Ableton Live, I'm going to show you, if this was a B pattern, here's one tip. Let's say if, if we were to freeze this track like this here, that's one of the benefits of Ableton Live because it's a DAW. Machine can't do uh, audio yet. So if we was, um, freeze the track like this, right click, okay, and then insert an audio track, we can take this guy right here and we can pop him in. Now, what happens is I can warp this audio for that particular track anyway. 
it's freezing what's on this MIDI channel. You notice how it froze this and it left everything else out. That is amazing. That, that's, that's awesome. You should take advantage of that. So when, when I go over here to the RAM, You see that I have full and total control over that audio file, you know, transpose it up, transpose it down, whatever the case may be. And I will go back to this track. Let's go ahead. and uh, Let me just go ahead and control Z that. And we'll bring this back. You know, one, one thing you can do another trick you can do is you can make your couple of copies like this here. I'll just do four for now. And these tracks are already frozen. So there's an audio track there. Okay. So now I can unfreeze this track. All right. I can grab my copy right here. I can go down to this next guy right here. And then I can freeze this track. Go ahead and do the same thing. Insert another audio track. Drag that down. Unwarp that. Same thing, grab another copy here. Okay, go down another track. I'm just gonna do a couple right quick here. We'll unfreeze this track and we'll freeze this track. Boom, 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 boom. We'll insert another audio track here. Now, of course, you know, if it was a beat, the, you know, the pattern would look a little bit different. You're probably looking at this like, hey, this is all the same thing. No, uh, it's basically what's in the MIDI note pattern here. It's it's taking it's freezing the MIDI only what's on the MIDI channel and I think that's that's dope. And I'll freeze this. You see what I'm saying? This is the kick, kick, kick is going up. You see what I'm saying? Because it's not because you're probably looking at the MIDI pattern like this, just like the MIDI pattern is going up like this. No, that's just triggering. This right here is the actual audio itself. So if it was a beat pattern, it would look a little bit different. But you know, I just figured I'd throw this part in the video as well. I think that'd be a, a dope tip to someone because that's a dope way to get you know fuller control of your audio you know that way you can make stems you know if you have a hi-hat pattern a kick pattern or snare pattern you can save these files you know for later use so i don't think it can get any more easier than that so yeah man i hope that helps you out this is your boy fontaine vip soundlab.com again if you're not a member of the site be sure to come by because we're going to be doing free machine tutorials on the new machine 2.5 Point six update uh, again I'm gonna upload this template on the website now as we speak and what you can do is you can just log in and click on matter of fact I'll put an icon a very recognizable icon for this and I'll label it machine 2.6.5 routing template and that way you guys can click on it download it and start getting ready for the new update so if you have any questions or concerns hit me up leave a comment in the section below leave a like and I will see you guys on a 2.6.5 update.